Hello and welcome to today's talk about hiring in C++ with meeting C++. I will be speaking today about um, how meeting C++ you know, utilizes the online world and its reach into social media to uh, start and run a job fair for now over two years. And we'll present some of the candidate data on uh, 2022 and give you a bit of a, you know, plans. And the next job fair is in two weeks. So if you're right now uh, hiring, um, there is an opportunity for you to be visible to the community in two weeks and um, to sign up for the job fair. So let's get started. So let me start with, you know, why meeting C++? So, for terms of visibility and outreach in the community, uh, Media C++ has a huge reach on LinkedIn, Twitter, and other platforms. Uh, just some examples here for the numbers. Um, and it's an untapped possibility for you to um, just have this as a visibility. And the job fair itself uh, exists now for two years, and it's really a good success for companies which are coming and hiring uh, through it. And that's a lot of the things we're going to talk about. but direction. First, um, also I already mentioned the results for 2022. Uh, usually at the beginning of the year, I will uh, pull an aggregate from our candidate data and show you a little bit about that um, it's on the blog, but it also will be more in details here in this talk. Um, but you know, let's start with a problem at hand. Uh, C++ devs are hard to find. And I've been hearing of this for years from lots of people as a community organizer. It's not something new. It's like a, a current and ongoing thing, which has been, you know, there for a lot of time. Um, and of course, with all the community exposure I have had, I wondered why is it the case? And um, to me, like, it's always like that I have barely met a company which is not hiring or which has um, it's not looking or it's not like saying, well, if you find a good candidate or a good developer, we will hire them. So um, there's a lot of competition and always has been for C++ devs. And on the other hand, um, this year might be a bit special and maybe it's right now a good time to be hiring uh, because of this is like, you know, sad for the people which got laid off, but for, for companies which are hiring cur currently, there might be some talent on the market, which otherwise would not be because right now, really everyone is looking. Um, the companies which are having open positions and the candidates which are looking for new perspectives. Um, but then when uh, you see how people are hiring in our industry, um, how every developer in our industry gets spammed, uh, by recruiters, uh, just, you know, hiring by shotgun and you, you find your candidate, but you alienate the rest of us. And, um, also I kind of find it funny that those people always claim to look at your profile and your profile is perfect. That's, that's why I'm contacting you. Right. Um, but if you look at my profile, this, this thing, um, I actually have on my profile there or had my profile there that I'm not looking for a job. And so if they looked at my profile, they wouldn't have contacted me. Right. And on the other hand, there's this, uh, LinkedIn trick where people put the emoji in their name. So, uh, if someone writes some automated and it's just a text replacement of their name, the emoji lands in the message, and then they uh, know that this is an automated message, which just has been sent to them because they uh, showed up in some search. Um, another thing which has actually happened to me. Uh, last year was misgendering, and that's very, very common for the women in our community. Um, from the data from LinkedIn, I think that the C++ community probably is something like 15 to 20 percent women at least. Um, but it depends like how you select this and how you uh, look at this, but it's definitely a minority. And so uh, misgendering for women in our community is very, very common and uh, yeah. That's not, not how you should hire, right? That's not, uh, the quality we should, uh, aim at. And I've been also asking the C++ community about this in 2021 and last year. And the question was, 
if you're not looking for a C++ job, how many recruiters slash companies have contacted you for one in the last three months? And uh, 2021, you saw it's the, the majority hasn't been contacted, but uh, it's actually when you look at the overall data, um, like two thirds of us almost have been, you know, reached out by a headhunter. And in 2022, it gets it's, it, it, it kind of you know gets it gets worse. So that now uh, the leading uh, group is 30 percent of us, which have been like really, really a lot of contacts with headhunters, which they didn't want to, and which you know it's just annoying them. Um, and if you're on LinkedIn, which is a platform with a lot of headhunters, um, you are. Uh, of course, more exposed to that. And it's also like the trend for 2022 holds here. Um, I probably would ask this question on social media again um, when the first quarter is over so that we you know, actually have data from that year. Um, and let me quickly go into the event and read the chat to see if there's any questions. I see some of you said hello. Um, yeah, see there's a bit of an audience. Greetings to Iran and so I'll be continuing the talk then. If you have any questions, you can post them in the chat. Um, I will continue to um, with the job fair now. Uh, let's go into, you know, um, maybe we should be trying a different approach. Like we should, um, and it's what, you know, I, I have been thinking about this and when I uh, started the online user group, which I have now for two years, um, maybe we could offer an event for hiring in, in the group. And so the idea came together to bring together those um, who are looking. And the, the picture you see here is now actually two years ago in mid-March in 2021, when we had the first big job fair in Remo back then. Today, we're using a different platform. We'll show you in a minute how this looks and today. But um, so for this year, um, Mini C++ will organize four job fairs. Um, we had a similar plan for last year, but last year it was actually five events uh, because the main event only had one company attend and two other companies reached out to me and said, well, we did have time in May, but how about June? So we had five events last year. Um, and the overall concept of this is that there's tables, virtual tables, where people can take a seat. And then there will be a conversation about C++, usually, you know, of course, revolving around your company, what your company is doing with C++, what your needs are for developers, what tools you are using, uh, what standards. And some people might have questions about that. And some people might, you know, directly uh, tell you what they need. And of course, also as uh, as a recruiter and as a company hiring, which has a table, um, you kind of set the tone and, you know, you can kind of, you know, you can present on this table, you can have a presentation, you can have a website open, uh, you can uh, work on code with people. There's a lot of possibilities you can do here. Um, and this fair is on the first day in the afternoon, three o'clock in Europe, and in the second day in the evening of Europe. So we kind of, uh, you know, we, we get on the first event, we get a lot of people also from Asia, which are still in the evening. And the second day, we are a bit more friendly to the folks which are not on the East Coast in the US and stand up already. So um, last thing, I'm going to talk a lot about the CV sharing form. There is a CV sharing form, uh, which is used by all candidates, which either are coming to the event or do not have time to be available at the event or couldn't make it to your table because uh, sometimes we just have too many candidates at one time and then they don't come back later. Um, and the CV sharing form usually gets 60 submissions per event um, after two years. So this is kind of the average. Um, and what I learned last year is that I'd like to kick off the event with a welcome message. And so we've experiment started experimenting with live streams to LinkedIn like I do right now. Um, and this will be you now definitely becoming part of the event that we start the live stream. Uh, have this as a welcome message, introduce the platform, but also introduce the employers and maybe have some of the employers as guests in the live stream 
Um, I want to keep that optional because not every employer has a possibility to do so, or not every employer wants to be on the live stream, and that's totally fine. Um, and also, if, if you want more than that, if you want to, you know, be the content, if you want to uh, actually be an employer branding, uh, working with me, C++, um, I, of course, I'm happy to, you know, organize your own live stream where we will be talking exclusively about your company. Um, there is a sponsorship for a user group available, which would fit very well. And of course, we can work on other ideas and uh, plans. And I already mentioned the, the CV sharing form. It's always online and the job fair sponsorship gives you six months of listing. Um, this is something what I learned last year is um, I, I want to offer more than just the event when people sponsor the event, because this is also kind of a contingency plan to ensure that you're receiving candidates for a longer time. And sometimes we just have job fairs, which are not very well matching to candidates or to companies, and we have less attendance. And so this is kind of uh, helping with that. Um, but let me talk a bit more about the CV sharing form. Uh, the CV sharing form is where candidates share their CV and this or resume. Um, this is on our website and the candidates are able and it's their job to select the employers they want to share their CV with. But this is the next step. And this step, it creates a light candidate profile where they can select the country, relocation and remote options they would like. Uh, the C++ skills is a big field in the middle there uh, with lots of C++ skills, which you can choose from uh, field of work and years of experience. And this kind of creates a light profile. Um, and when this was set up, I realized I can do an aggregate. I can just draw a statistic from this, right? And so this is the countries which candidates came from from last year. In total, we had about a little bit more than 250 candidates last year. And these are, these are unique numbers uh, from 57 countries. And we, we sometimes have a bit of a chicken and egg problem. Uh, if we have like no companies from a country, we have less candidates. And if we don't have candidates, we, it's harder to get companies. So uh, this is evolving and you have to try. Uh, right now, it's very good if you're hiring internationally or from Europe or North America. Um, but, the, you know, companies often come back and have to try if it works out for them. Um, and so this is the chosen skills from 2022 as an aggregate of over all of those 250 candidates. And actually, when I looked at this number, I realized there's something nicely matching up with 250 and its percentages. 50 now is around 20% of candidates. So you see everything from open CV to the right is basically under 20% in, in candidates that feel uh, that they should um, you know, match with that. Um, 40%, that's everything from um, generic programming to the left, no, to the right. <laughs> um, anyways, anything which is like above generic programming in this bar uh, is more than 40% in the candidates' fields that they should, you know, um, this, this doesn't mean that the other candidates are 60% doesn't know that it. it means that 40% uh, felt that they have enough knowledge to be, um, you know, sharing that with an employer and uh, might be, you know, asked about that in their interview. Um, and so we see that when we go to 60%, um, now it's the top six, uh, modern C++ object orientation, C++ 17, Linux, C++ 14, and C++ 11. And C++ 11 has always been in, in the lead and, um, you probably already guessed that that's 80%. More than 80% of the candidates feel that, you know, their basis, their base of their knowledge is C++ 11. Um, and if we go on and look at the fields of work, 
um, in 2022, we see that like there's a lot of uh, desktop embedded and then um, a closed field of telecommunication, server finance, automotive, image processing, and also like a lot of people seemingly with a science and university background. Um, and also, I, I want to stress like these bars are always heavily influenced by which companies are showing up. Um, an example I usually pick out because it's like so specialized is the gaming community. If we have gaming companies actually be present at the event, of course, we have game developers from the gaming industry coming. But if we don't have them, they're probably not showing up. And so uh, this graph will also kind of, you know, adopt to uh, what industries will be using this in, in the long run and how often they will be using it. Um, Years of experience is now very much settled in that we have a lot of people which are junior or on the way to become juniors and followed by an equal amount of people that are looking into becoming seniors or are seniors. And then there is everything which has more than 10 years of experience with C++ um, and are probably like, in you know, looking for a team lead position, looking for more experienced um, ways to work with C++ and are really the, the other third which we have in our candidates. And as I said, this creates then, and every candidate fills this out, it creates a light con uh, candidate profile and companies also can filter on this. So a company can choose to say, we do not want to be visible to every developer. We only want to be visible to people that know Qt and Boost, um, which they then can say like how many how, how many of those things they, they want have to match to the candidate that they are visible. So you can uh, choose not to be visible to all candidates as a company, um, but most companies don't use this feature actually. They are choosing to rather uh, look at every candidate and then uh, to filter um, out what they are interested in. Um, for the candidate, the next step after the form you saw in the first slide on this section is then to basically select the companies and the employers they're interested in. So this is not an automatic and um, then share their resume and add a general cover letter, which is optional. So not everybody, everybody does it. You should do it. It's better, but not every candidate does it. Um, and so this offering is not a candidate pool. Okay. So right now we don't have a pool where you can just look around and say, these are the available candidates. Uh, this is a solution where the candidates actively choose you as an employer that they're interested in you. And you don't have to cold call candidates that maybe already have a job or maybe already, uh, you know, are figured out that they're not interested in, in your company as an employer. Um, and if we uh, draw an aggregate for each event and see how many have uh, candidates have, have been submitting over this form, um, you see it's like really like an, a, a pretty well line which goes around 60. And the two events which are really below 60 are the events of the second quarter from 2022, um, which is the May and the June event, uh, which in total had three companies. It would be very good to have that as one event, it would be in around 60, probably a bit above that, I guess. But um, they kind of cannibalized and didn't have the same time frame to uh, be visible for candidates. So. And um, here are the skills for 2022 and 2021. And um, I left the percentages in so you kind of can see what uh, this is for, of course, only for, for uh, last year, for 2022, that for 2021, this doesn't match up uh, that nicely. So I didn't put the percentages in because it's, it only makes sense if you have those bars. Um, and one thing I wanted to point out is like, I, I looked a lot at this graph and there's a tiny change that C++14 is now uh, more or less a little bit ahead of, C++ of Linux, but maybe that switches around in this year. So 
Um, one of the changes I saw is that Conan was like on the same level as Dear Imgui last year and this year it's definitely has gained there. And in 2021, next to Conan was Android and Android also has gained more than Conan. So it's a bit up in this, but it's also a very close group to, to see uh, catching up here. And interestingly, um, above this group last year was Catch2, which now is like on the same level as uh, Android. So there has not been like a visible adoption in the candidate population for Catch2. And generally, I think that we, you know, will not see a lot of this. I, uh, like this, this data doesn't tell us like about the general developer population. Okay. This is a uh, general population which is looking for a job in an international context. So um, don't uh, pull general assumptions from those graphs. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah, and then the event sponsored and free tables. The sponsored tables are listed. So sponsored tables, if you choose a sponsored table, you are listed in the CV sharing form on the website and in the job section with your logo, not with your table. Um, the introduction of the live stream is there, um, potentially having you as or someone from your company as a guest to, to speak about your company for like five minutes. Um, you will have access to the recruiting tooling, which I will be speaking in a minute about. Uh, of course, this enables me to work on the event, to work on this problem and to advertise it. Um, and you and your feedback drives and guides the tooling. Uh, the free tables are an option to try out the event. Um, it's event only, so you're not being in the CV sharing form. You're not visible on the website with your logo, uh, but you will be able to attend the event. Uh, you will be listed below those tables from the sponsors. Um, you will be getting a feel of the event format, and this is limited to two visits. Because if you tried it twice and you don't see a value in it, I don't want to waste your time in uh, giving you another free table. Um, and also your table will be smaller, so you will have less capacity for candidates in the event. Um, and I, I do want to also explain to you what a table is. <laughs> Because you know we are in a virtual environment, and there, you know, what 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 is uh, this is uh, the lounge which hosts this event today, um, and the table is a video room with eight, four, or two seats. Everyone is able to join this by clicking on a seat, and once two folks sit on a table, a meeting, a virtual meeting starts, which is like a, a video call. Um, people are still able to join your table then. As you see, those uh, three of those four tables have actually a meeting ongoing and you assign, kind of see the time which is ticking down. Um, meetings have their own view, which is like from inside the meeting, you will not be able to see the tables anymore. Uh, it will take you to a different view. Um, these meetings are limited to one hour by Hubilo and unfortunately Hubilo doesn't place you on your table again, but it just, you know, freeze the table and getting everyone off the table, um, which is unfortunate, uh, but it's a Hubido feature I can change. So um, if you're like recruiting on the event, please go back to your own table. And if you're a candidate, uh, decide if you want to return to the table of the employer you just talked to. If you've just been there for an hour, you, you might, you know, want to talk to a different company. Um, and I, I manage the recruiting tooling. Um, there is a little bit of a backend on my website, which helps you to view the candidates that have submitted to you via the form and also gives you similar graphs as I showed you for um, all the candidates that have submitted over the platform to you. Um, those graphs, I think, might be useful for you to have an internal presentations. Um, this list is available if you use a team feature to other people hiring in your company. Um, the candidates which fill out the form are also mailed to you to the contact email you gave um, or not, not not to the contact email to the job email um there's these are two different emails can be the same email but this is a difference i should mention um and of course i've implemented also a filter 
and a search functionality. So if you have a lot of candidates and, and we do get per event like 50 candidates, which of course not to choose all the employers, but 30 to 40 per event is for some companies a reality. And so I figured that it would be good to have search functionality. This is either searching on the actual uh, values or doing a, a plain text search. And that way you can find, for example, folks for a position that you want to hire for, you know, having a position which really needs to know knowledge of Qt or Poco, or you have a team which already works with C++20 and they're like having a new position and they're looking for someone who is already knowledgeable in C++20. Um, so this enables you to specifically get an overview on uh, which candidates that submitted to you have which knowledge. Um, and that is basically the current standing of the job fair. Um, it exists now for over two years. Um, the first real job fair was in March and two years ago, and there was like a pilot in all this uh, first tryout of this in October 2020, which worked pretty well. And so we uh, continued to work on this since then and always trying to, to update it, to keep it current, to see where the trends in the time go and what other features we can add to enhance uh, the visibility of this. And also this is like with, with every event, we uh, reach out to the community and more people are knowing about this. So this penetrates very, very slowly and sinks into the community, the knowledge. And most of the people I'm reaching for the event are of course not looking for a job, but they will know about it. And when they are looking for a job, they will probably then, uh, if it fits for them, um, use the tooling or come to the event to share their CVs with the employers. Um, and let me again quickly see in the chat if there are any questions. Okay, one second, there's a question. Um, so, Burke asks, Hello, is there any reliable resource out there for junior C++ developers about which subjects to focus on in order to get hired? Um, I think the hiring requirements, it's really diverse. So I, I think focusing right now on 14 and C++ 17, knowing those bases, um, potentially having something visible on GitHub and generally knowing build tools, knowing modern knowledge is something which can make you interesting to a team. It doesn't mean that your team is like hiring you because uh, they have all that, but maybe they are also hiring you because you are the new guy or the new person, the new girl um, that brings in that knowledge that they say we are now you know hiring new positions and we want to have people with newer standard knowledge so that they can share their standard knowledge with our folks but our folks then can share their knowledge about our code base with them on the same time and maybe that is also like you know a good onboarding strategy for companies to hire people that have a good c17 knowledge and then work through C++ 17 in examples in their code base with um, their current employers and employees so that they can be onboarded easier and also yeah, kind of, you know, gives knowledge to the team. Um, and also like if, to chat, like if you have any answers to that question, I'm happy to, to, you know, to let you post to the chat about that. If you can answer a question in the chat, that's always great. And with that, let me continue. Um, yeah, so these are the eight companies which are listed at cvupload.mediacpb.com, which is the form, this uh, short URL leads to the form. And these are the companies which are currently listed and uh, which you can choose to submit your CV if you're looking for a job. Um, these are the companies which are currently using this. Um, regarding the job fair in two weeks, we currently have two companies signed up, which are the last two uh, icons here, Quasar and DaVinci. 
Um, and I have like two or three other companies which are interested. And also this event should give more people to have, you know, an interest in coming to, to the event. Um, and as, as I always say, it's, it's really important for the event to sign up early as a company to be visible. And um, usually a lot of companies then sign up um, a week, like next week or the week before the job fair. So um, that is uh, going to be probably more than the two companies which we currently have. But the form, that's also like the advantage of the form, the form always uh, has the companies of the last half year um, available. And I quickly want to talk a little bit about the submission model. The candidates are using the CV submission form and choose the employers they are interested in with sharing. Then the application state is kind of this through this created, right? This is now an application and um, my system mails then an email with a link to the uploaded CV to the employers. Um, I do also offer the filtered search functionality. So maybe it's not the email, maybe it's a filtered search functionality, which actually gets your attention and also this updates application state. And then in theory, there would be an application state where you could look at the website. Um, that's not implemented because the reality is that mostly employers choose to directly reach out to you and they do not update the internal application uh, status um, in my local database, right? And I, I, I could force employers to like only work with this database and only work with the website, but that would not fit their hiring processes. And we want to enable a lot of employers to be on this and not uh, only work with a few employers that have the time to go through an external process for hiring. Um, and so the reality is that the CV submission form where you choose your C++ skills, your field of work, your region, which is continents, and also your country, um, and years of experience is then shared per email to the companies. And some companies may already like filter for visibility on this if they only like some some companies have chosen to filter on region to only be visible for candidates from a certain region because they hire locally, they don't uh, want to support uh, international hiring, which I understand is often like smaller companies doing this. Um, and on the other hand, a lot of the companies we currently have do hire internationally. And so they are actually taking the mm, not the filtering approach, they're taking the approach to look at every candidate. And of course, what's for the community in this? Um, it's a better hiring, I hope, um, which we improve with this. It includes employers and it's kind of also inclusive for them because they only get the candidates actually that chose to have interest in them. Um, so it makes their hiring process also more effective. Um, and of course, yeah, this all generates cross-funding for my online activities because the online platform we use costs money and my time costs money. And also this helps with building a platform and a network for C++, which is the, what I do is meeting C++ now for over 10 years and we're pretty successful in, in this goal. Um, and of course, I am always looking for employers to join. Um, and many thanks to the companies which are currently in the system, but also a lot of the companies which, you know, have used this. And um, mostly I see like the pattern that some companies use this either like until they have hired everything they wanted or that companies like use this once or twice a year to um, include that in their hiring process. And so thanks for all the support. And these are the eight companies which are currently in the system live and um, where you can submit as a candidate to And with that, thanks for listening. Um, 
reach out to my website uh, and here in LinkedIn, et cetera, um, to the email. Um, if you have any interest in that, if you have any questions, I'd also, of course, now we'll be looking at the chat. I see that somebody asked a question with the slides. Um, I usually don't share the slides. I could upload them on my website. Maybe I do that. Um, but this will be available as a video. So if you missed the first 15 minutes or if you don't really want to watch this again, uh, this will be uh, on LinkedIn directly available after the event ends as a video. And I will uh, upload this later today on um, YouTube. So this will be later on YouTube and then also be on meeting C++ again. So yeah. Ah, there's a question which I always get. Pricing question. Is the fee for the sponsored table the only fee when hiring a candidate? Yes. Um, uh, this is this is a, a lot of companies have asked me that, and I see that a lot of companies got uh, by similar offers burned, where basically uh, you have to pay extra to access your candidates after the event. Um, I want to keep the prices fair so that it's available to a lot of companies, and I want to also keep the offer fair for both sides. So um, there's no extra fee to contact the candidate. Um, that's also why I directly via the form mail out uh, to uh, you as a company, the candidate with uh, the link to the CV that you are able to contact them. And there's a question from Sri Lanka. Greetings to Sri Lanka. It's always amazing to see which people I reach with uh, online. Um, Global organized C++ certifications that you can enroll. Uh, that's that's a good question. Um, I I have in all the years I have seen some attempts to have something like like that, but I do think that uh, there's nothing right now which is widely recognized. Um, Rainer Grimm has a mentoring program. Um, but I am not sure if this mentoring program is like available to folks in Sri Lanka, um, either because of the availability of Rana Grimm or because of the costs that Rana Grimm has to charge for this mentoring program. Um, maybe this will become available. Um, we actually will have Rana Grimm as a guest on March 20th, and we will be speaking about the mentoring program in the online user group then also. Um, just as, as a spoiler for, for, for the next uh, months and events. Um, so then thank you for listening. Um, if you have any additional questions, I'm happy to look at that. And otherwise I will be closing the live stream. Thank you for listening. Thank you for coming. Um, see 33, 33 people are at least live on LinkedIn still. That's pretty good. Uh, and then, um, yeah, as I mentioned, the video of this will be available later uh, on LinkedIn. It's available basically as soon as I... Um, oh, there's another important question. No, it's not. Um, so, um, you can still sign up uh, for the event on the 14th March. Okay, this, this is open. It's like, uh, go to the job fair link, directly takes you to the website of the job fair, and then there's another link going to the booking. Uh, this is available and it's uh, available till uh, next week, basically until Friday, probably you should try to get that through um, to have that in the system. Uh, Monday before the event is also still like in, in, in theory possible, but it's not helping with the event so much. Uh, it helps you as a company, of course, to sign up late um, if you can not arrange it before that. 
but if you can make it earlier that helps a lot you and also you like um the sooner you sign up the 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 earlier you receive cvs because from the mo moment you book the sponsoring you're visible on the website right from that moment and from that moment a candidate that chooses to use this form like people will have using will have been using this form right now or will be using this form today because of this live stream and of course this live stream also has a bit of the uh, opportunity to reach out to all your folks to sign up to the event um, so no it's not like I, I do this talk and have the sign up closed that that would be uh, not a good idea um, and so if you don't have any more questions I will close the live stream Thank you for listening. I'm looking forward to see many of you in two weeks, either as employers or as candidates. And um, with that, I'm going to go offline with the stream.